Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first session of Ads Academy. My name is David, and I'm working as a product lead on privacy-centric measurement. We will uncover in this session the foundation of privacy-centric measurement and see how enhanced conversion, content mode, and Google Analytics 4 can work together to unlock growth and help you achieve your marketing objectives. The digital world is experiencing a paradigm shift. Over the past few years, users have shared with us their willingness to have greater transparency and control over how their data was being collected and used, especially for ads customization. As a result of that, digital platforms and law have evolved to provide greater protection and choice for users. Today's evolving industry has led to two types of changes. On the one side, you have the regulatory change, which defines the framework with which data is being collected and used. That's also when we talk about regulations that concept of consent is being introduced. You might have heard about GDPR, EU data protection law. On the other side, you have the technology change, which impacts our historical ability to collect data through cookies, which we're moving away from. So let's take, for instance, like the example of browsers such as Safari, Firefox, and soon as well, Chrome. Cookie-less browsing modes will become the new standards in the industry. Because of those changes, user-level tracking and observable conversion data is declining. Digital platforms have all taken a different approach to ads privacy. We at Google think that we need to show the way within the industry, but with respect. We've been working over the last years with the industry, trying to develop a set of new privacy-centric measurement solutions that will support our advertisers at the same time, get a clear understanding of what their return on investment is without compromising on our user's end privacy and trust. We want to set up new standards for the industry on privacy. We have built a suit of privacy-centric measurement solutions that work together and allow us to shift from third-party to first-party data, ranging from sidewide tagging to enhanced conversion without forgetting about content mode and Google Analytics 4. Those products will become key in preserving your foundation on measurement and also allow you to safeguarding your performance. We've seen earlier how technology changes can affect your ability to observe data. And that's where enhanced conversion comes in. Enhanced conversion for web will allow you to increase conversion observability, whether you're optimizing towards lead forms or even online sales by increasing the amount of available first-party data. In the same way, through that, you'll be able to have as well better conversion modeling. And finally, enhanced conversion for web will also allow to improve your campaign's performance. As we know, today, automated bidding strategies are all dependent on the amount of data that is like observable and available within the systems. With greater modeling and greater observability, it will also help them perform at their best. We expect today the increase on conversion rates to be of 5% after implementation on search campaigns. And this amount is only expected to be, become higher as more and more browsers are moving towards cookie-less browsing modes. Content mode, on the other hand, will help you navigate the regulatory side of things. Through conversion modeling, you will be able to recover loss of conversion due to user content choices. Operating in the EU or the UK, you're required to obtain content from your users to store the data. This can either be done through a third-party content management platform or through an in-house solution. Either way, you'll want to implement content mode. Content mode is Google Ads measurement solution that allows your Google Tags to communicate about a user's content status and also enables Google to model for conversions. Content mode comes with like a few benefits, which are that it's respectful of content choices while allowing you to better measure. It will also help you solve for unknowns. As we know, conversion modeling will be there to fill the gaps where observability of data can't be recovered. It will also ultimately help you measure performance in a better way. Used with a hand conversion for web, it will provide you with a 360-degree view of your performance. Now, 
how do enhanced conversion and content width work together? When the user grants consent, enhanced conversion for web will be able to recover those conversions. This will also help improve and increase the size of the observable data pool. Content mode, in the meantime, will work behind the scenes to train its models based on this observable data. But when the user doesn't provide content, then measurement of conversions will have to be done as an aggregate level. This could also mean that we might lose insight of our customer journey. And this is where content mode can help solve for this issue by modeling conversions based on the observable data it has trained its model on earlier. This will help filling any gaps for measurement and as well compared performance. Now, what enhanced conversion and content mode have in common is that they both leverage conversion modeling. Today, you could have your measurement foundations built on very robust observable data, including implementing enhanced conversion. But this might prove not to be enough, as we could still have some gaps due to user content choices, increased browser regulations, or even uh, movement across devices. It is therefore important that we leverage machine learning to help us fill those gaps in terms of measurement. More observable data will also mean better modeling for content mode. Now, let's talk about Google Analytics 4. Google Analytics 4 will become your new platform when it comes to marketing decisions involving first-party data. Not only it will use conversion modeling to identify and report on customer insights, but it will also help you improve your automated bidding strategies and inform your wider marketing strategy. Google Analytics 4 is the new measurement solutions that is designed to help you keep up with the changes within the ecosystem. It comes with a new set of features and sets you up for a future without cookies. This includes helping you navigate and address measurement gaps, for instance, through conversion modeling when cookies or other identifiers are not available. Secondly, it will also provide you with a clear and complete view of your customer journey as we move to an event-based measurement model this will help you get like a clear view of what your customer life cycle is across web and app. And finally, productive metrics will also be a game changer for you when it comes to building a strong and robust first party origin strategy. If you're using universal analytics, keep in mind that universal analytics will be deprecated sunsetting on July the 1st, 2023. So we urge you to take like, the necessary steps to migrate right now, not to lose any capabilities. Now, enabling privacy-centric measurement solutions is more of a journey than a one-shot approach. We want you to use these slides, this sequence, to help you on your journey. Something to note here is that there's no one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to implementing those solutions. It will depend ultimately on where you are on your journey and what your needs are as well. But we want you to know that you should use this sequence to advance towards this objective. All three products from the private eccentric measurement suite all work together and are all complementary to each other. Now, let's talk about performance. Once you have your privacy centric measurement solutions in place, don't forget to enable automation as well to maximize performance. Smart bidding leverages machine learning to optimize towards conversion or conversion value, trying always to get you towards like the users are the most likely to convert. Today, there are 80% of Google advertisers that use smart bidding for cost efficiency and saving themselves time. Automation can only work as good as you feed it with great data, meaning that if you combine the first party data approach with smart bidding, you also make sure to provide it with the most accurate and relevant data for it to use. Smart bidding will both use observable and model data gathered from enhanced conversion and content mode to best predict outcomes and optimize towards performance. Well, this is it. I hope that you found this session useful and I'm handing it over now to Pippa to take you through the different steps of the Google Analytics migration. Thank you. welcome to the second segment of Ads Academy. I'm Pippa, a regional product lead here at Google with a focus in privacy and measurement. I've been at Google for over four years now, working across a few teams in Sydney, Auckland, and most recently here in Dublin. 
My day to day includes going between our incredible partner teams here at Google and our engineers to make sure that we're bringing the right products to the market to solve for the right challenges and opportunities within the broader industry. But that also means that I'm not quite as close to the people side as I used to be. So I'm thrilled to be here today to be running this training for you on one of my favorite products, Google Analytics 4. We'll be diving into some step-by-step -step instructions as well as some key watchouts on setting up and linking Google Analytics 4 properties. But firstly, why? Universal Analytics will begin its deprecation on July 1st, 2023. After a period, you will no longer be able to see reports or access Universal Analytics data. And to avoid loss of data and gaps within your reporting, it's important to migrate to Google Analytics 4 as soon as possible. Let's take a look on how we can do that. We can boil it down into three key steps. Firstly, and what I'll be going into today, is setting up and linking Google Analytics 4 properties. Here, you can use the GA4 Setup Assistant to create a new Google Analytics 4 property that collects data in parallel uh, with your existing Universal Analytics property. Here, we need to be sure to re-tag if we're not using the latest site-wide tagging, the Google tag, and enable data collection during the setup phase. Also in this step, we need to link through the new Google Analytics 4 property to Google Ads as well. In step two, over time, we can create, import, and activate Google Analytics 4 audiences and conversions. And then eventually, step three is to move over business critical reporting from Universal Analytics to Google Analytics 4. Diving into that a little deeper and zooming into that first step of creating and linking a Google Analytics 4 property. Before we actually start, it's important that we start by reviewing your ads account as well as your reporting structure and how you can get the most out of the new Google Analytics 4 for your business by using its features and controls that it provides. Here we can analyze current ads campaigns and current Universal Analytics conversions and audiences that you're using in your advertising strategy. You can ask yourself questions like, do I need all of my current conversions and audiences? Are they adding value to my business? Do I have to migrate all of them? Or is there a potential here to redefine, you know, what success looks like in terms of conversions and audiences that are adding the most value to you and your business. Here, we can use this as a bit of an opportunity to polish your advertising strategy, if you will. Now, getting started. You can find the setup assistant within the admin console of an analytics account. You can think of the setup assistant as a checklist to work through. Note that some items are optional and their relevance depends on how you're currently using analytics. The Google Analytics 4 Setup Assistant can help to guide you through this process. Here on the screen, I've included a screenshot to help demonstrate exactly what this looks like in action. It's going to provide you with a step-by-step -step guide, which will help to walk you through how to configure the necessary steps to make your Google Analytics 4 property ready for use. We can start by making sure that our Google Analytics 4 property is going to be linked through to the Universal Analytics property in its original. Now, to create a new property under, I need to create a new Google Analytics 4 property within the Setup Assistant, click Get Started. Secondly, if your site uses the jtag.js tag, you'll have the option to enable data collection using your existing tags. We recommend using this feature if you want to benefit from some of the new features within Google Analytics 4, for example, predictive audiences. And then lastly, importantly, click Create Property. The Setup Assistant identifies a number of configuration settings that you can use to implement in your Google Analytics 4 property. We recommend that you Firstly, link all required integrations, for example, Google Ads, and I'll show you how to do that in the next step. Secondly, activate Google Signals. Next is setting up audiences and migrating your goals and conversions, and we'll be diving into that in a little deeper in future sessions. Then, and this is a more advanced step and you don't have to do this, is setting up user IDs as well as measurement protocols. If you have a Universal Analytics property connected to your Google Analytics 4 property, the settings identified here help to create continuity in configuration between the two properties that you have. Diving a little more into my first point here, 
The Google Ads link import tool can be used to copy over the links between Google Ads and Universal Analytics to your new Google Analytics 4 property. You can access the Google Ads linking tool via admin, setup assistant, linking, and get started. After linking a Google Analytics 4 property to your Google Ads, conversions can be exported for usage within Google Ads once you've created them. Audiences are actually immediately available within Google Ads after creation without having to be exported separately. Again, I've included a screenshot of exactly what that looks like here on screen. Now, I know that I've whittled through quite a lot of content this morning, so thank you for both your time and attention as we've gone through a deep dive on how to set up and link a Google Analytics 4 properly successfully. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Abdul Rahman, a measurement growth consultant at Google. I'm super excited to talk to you about audiences in GA4 and bring to you some new features which you can use for your Google Ad campaigns. So make sure you check out this session coming soon. Our research at Google shows consumer journeys are becoming increasingly complex and engaging the target customer is becoming trickier than ever. As digital touch points, channels, and choices continue to expand, consumer journeys have become ever messier, resembling a chaotic scavenger hunt. Nowadays, users can hop between different stages of the funnel in a non-linear fashion. This calls for a radical change in the audience strategy, a change from siloed approach per channel and platform to cohorts that engage in an ongoing activity cycle. And this is where GA4 comes to your rescue. GA4 can help you build a robust audience strategy. So number one, you can collect and measure. The event-based data model merges site and app data, helping you to make better data-driven decisions with a deeper understanding of user behavior. You can also integrate your data from options like data import or measurement protocol to provide you with a holistic customer view. Number three, you can analyze for insights. Google Analytics 4 has machine learning embedded at its core, providing analysts with powerful insights and access to data. You can leverage insights and intelligence to do more, such as quickly gleaning valuable insights that enable better marketing decisions. And lastly, you can activate on the insights. It enables you to develop a comprehensive plan for activating your insights and audiences through our platform integrations. Now you must be wondering, how do I capitalize on these new capabilities of GA4 for Google ad campaigns? So let's jump into the implementation part. We'll go over three simple steps. Number one, link your Google Ads account to GA4. Second one, create audiences. And finally, add these audiences to the ad campaigns. If you have your Google Ads and GA4 account open, that's great. You can follow the steps. If not, that's also fine. You can come back to this video later and play it at your own pace. First and foremost, you should link the Google Ads account to GA4. So for this, go to the admin panel in your GA4 account, then go to the product links and click Google Ads links. Press the link option here. Finally, choose your ad account and make sure to enable personalized advertising so that your audiences are available in Google Ads library and can be used in the ad campaigns. The next step is to create audiences so you can unleash the power of GA4 targeting you have three options to choose from. So you can either create an audience from scratch, or you can use system templates, or create a predictive audience, a smart new feature I am super excited to introduce you to today. Let's see how we can set each of these up. First up, creating a custom audience. Step number one, click on create a custom audience. Then you can name and describe your audience. Step number three is to include or exclude users from numerous events and attributes options. For example, you can choose a page view event where users add to cart. You then need to set a duration and trigger for this audience. Final step, click Save. There's also a second option to choose from GA4 suggested audiences from templates that are based on your industry. For instance, you might want to push a particular product or service to the suggested audience of non-purchasers, your potential customers who have not made a purchase yet. You can also choose from a variety of demographic options or even acquisition channels. For example, you might want to tailor your content depending on which social media platform your user is coming from. And now on to the new GA4 feature which is bound to excite you, predictive audiences. This will translate your job of building a complex audience using costly machine learning models to a mere click. 
you have a wide variety of predictive audiences to choose from, making you a proactive marketing strategist. There are options such as likely seven-day purchasers or likely seven-day churning users. And for example, you might want to customize an offer for seven-day likely churning purchasers for a stable customer retention rate. Predictive audiences will surely help you uncover new possibilities and become even more creative. Now let's move on to the final step where you can use these powerful audiences in your Google Ad campaigns. So step number one, click on tools on the top right in the Google Ads interface. Step number two, open the audience manager from shared library options. You can now choose the segments you want to target in this dropdown that you can see in the screenshot. Final step, add these to the campaign or ad groups from the add to option in the blue menu bar. In order to get more info on how to best use these audiences in ad campaigns or any related questions, please check out our Google Ads Help Center. And that's a wrap. In this session, we learned the evolving customer journeys which are becoming more complex, how GA4 can help you build a robust audience strategy, and the implementation. So how to link your Google Ads account, how to create audiences and utilize these new features, and finally, how to add these audiences to the ad campaigns. You are now ready to execute your audience strategy and have the competitive advantage to grow your business in the modern era of complex customer journeys. I wish you best of luck in leveraging the new capabilities of GA4. If you need any more information, make sure to check out our Google Analytics Help Center. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session on conversion migration. I am Nitish. I'm a product lead here at Google. In this section, I will help you understand how you can complete conversion migration steps in GA4 migration journey. We know that businesses which continue to improve their digital measurement tend to perform better over time. In fact, BCG found that there is an incremental 16 percentage point of return for businesses who invest in measurement maturity. And Bain and Company found that businesses who do so are four times more likely to achieve their goals. GA4 has many new features inbuilt which can greatly help you improve your measurement. GA4 can help you better understand ROI of your media investments. GA4 has improved durability and modeling capabilities which can help you measure full impact in privacy-first environment with less availabilities of cookies. GA4 also has new advanced features such as data-driven attributions and engaged view conversions, which will help you understand full customer journey. However, to be able to use these wonderful features for your campaign activations, you will have to import GA4 conversion data in Google Ads and use it with smart bidding. In this section, we will see how you can achieve this. GA4 conversion migration is a four-step process. First step is to set up conversions in GA4 Second step is to import them as conversions in Google Ads. Then the third step is to monitor data discrepancy for 15 days. And then the final fourth step is to complete migration with conversion swaps. Over the next few slides, I will quickly show you how you can create GA4 conversions and import them to Google Ads. I would encourage you to rewatch this video to do step-by-step -step implementations later at your own pace. The first step, is to create conversions in GA4. And there are two ways to do it. One way is to use goal migration tool to replicate UA goals as conversions in GA4. And then the other way is to create conversions manually. If you currently use UA goals, then goal migration tool can help you replicate UA conversion goals as events in GA4 property. With the goal migration tool, you can quickly recreate eligible goals from your connected Universal Analytics property as conversion events in GA4 property. For each eligible UA goal you select, the goal migration tool automatically creates a new event rule and marks the created event as conversion. Now, let's see how to set up conversions manually. There are two ways to do this. First way is to mark an existing event as conversion. This can be done by going to Google Analytics, then to configure and events on left, and in existing events tables, selecting toggle under mark as conversions. Second way to manually create GA4 conversion 
is to mark a new event as conversions. In order to do this, go to Google Analytics, Admin, Property, Conversions on the left, and then click on New Conversion Event as shown on this slide. Now that we have created conversions in GA4, next step is to import Analytics conversion into Google Ads. In order to do this, you should go to Google Ads interface and click on Tools and Setting, and then select Conversions. In the next view, then click on Summary and select New Conversion Action. In the view which will open up, click on Import GA4 Properties and select Web Options as shown on this slide. Click to continue. In the next view, you will be able to see all GA4 conversions which are linked to this account. Please select the ones which you wish to import to Google Ads. Now, you will be able to see the chosen conversions are imported to Google Ads as secondary. The next third step is to monitor conversion numbers of UA and GA4 conversions for 15 days. This is to compare conversion count of similar UA and GA4 conversions. This is important because any change to conversion setting will have an effect on smart bidding strategies. So it is important to understand potential discrepancies. While it is common to see small discrepancy in conversion and conversion value, that is seeing data for those metrics in analytics account that differ from your conversion metrics in the Google Ads account, it is not necessarily a sign that your measurement implementation is wrong. Discrepancy could be result of different measurement methods. We suggest following recommendations in the Help Center if you see large discrepancy before you start bidding on GA4 conversions. At least 15 days after importing your new GA4 conversions, when enough data has been gathered and you have ensured that there are no major discrepancies, you are finally ready to switch from bidding on UA conversions to bidding on GA4 conversions. So let's do it. However, try to avoid this process during major peaks. Go back to Tools and Setting and click on Conversions. Now, you can change the status of your secondary GA4 conversions from secondary to primary by clicking on each of them. After clicking on Conversion Action, in the next view, click on Edit Settings. Now, change the conversion action from secondary to primary. It is important that you similarly change UA conversions from primary to secondary to avoid duplication of data. Don't forget to save your changes. That's it for today. Through the steps we just saw, you will be able to successfully migrate GA4 conversions and use them in your campaigns. To learn more about how GA4 and Google Ads work together to help you achieve your goals, visit Google's Ads Help Center. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Adi, and I'm a regional product lead for Google Analytics 4. And I'll be taking you through the fourth and final session of this Ads Academy module on privacy-focused measurement. In the previous sections, we've gone over the essentials of privacy-focused measurement, how to set up and link GA4 properties, and how to configure core ad features in GA4. In this session, we'll now take a closer look at how you can start using GA4 as your primary analytics platform. And in particular, how you can start applying conversion actions and audiences set up in GA4 to your Google Ads campaigns, and how you can unlock value from net new audiences and event types in GA4. Now, a quick heads up, the session will cover quite a lot of detailed information. However, you can of course go back and re-watch the session on demand. So let's start with a quick recap. As mentioned in previous sections, all universal analytics properties will stop processing new hits on July 1st, 2023 for standard properties and October 1st, 2023 for 360 properties. So what this means is that not only will we stop processing reporting data in universal analytics properties after these deadlines, but conversions and audiences set up in universal analytics will also stop populating, which in turn has consequences from a smart bidding optimization and campaign targeting perspective as well. So therefore it becomes imperative for us to migrate universal analytics goals to Google Analytics 4 as quickly and as early as possible. Now, when it comes to the options for doing so, 
Some of you might have uh, access to the external goals migration tool, which, as you can see over here, will allow you to very quickly and easily replicate and recreate the goals that you had set up in Universal Analytics with new corresponding conversion actions in GA4. However, in addition to making use of the goals migration tool, it's also possible to set up conversion actions in GA4 manually, which we can essentially do by configuring an event and then marking that particular event as the conversion. So if you're looking to set up conversion actions in GA4 manually, there are a couple of things to keep in mind while doing so. Firstly, in Universal Analytics, we would typically set up a goal by specifying certain conditions that would have to be met, whereas conversion reporting in GA4 is event-based. So essentially, we would need to set up an event in GA4 and then select and specify that particular event as a conversion. So for instance, if you were looking to uh, set up a conversion action for whenever a user reaches a particular page, in Universal Analytics, we would have to set up a destination goal in order to track that. In GA4, we would have to set up a page view event for when someone lands on that page and then set that page view event as a conversion or as an event that should be counted as a conversion. Now, once that is done, um, we can of course export our conversion events set up in GA4 to Google Ads in much the same way as we would export goals set up in Universal Analytics to Google Ads. So again, the key takeaway over here is to ensure that we have the correct events configured in GA4, after which we can specify and select desired events as conversion actions that can then be exported over to Google Ads. Now, once new conversion actions have been set up in Google Analytics 4, we would recommend validating these new conversion actions against the older conversion actions created in Universal Analytics. And this is essentially to make sure that the new conversion actions set up in GA4 have been configured correctly and are tracking the same corresponding events as goals in Universal Analytics were tracking. So there are a few steps we'd recommend taking to validate GA4 conversions against UA goals. The first step is to compare conversion volumes and conversion values between the old goals set up using Universal Analytics and the new goals set up using GA4. Now, as we'll see, some minor discrepancies are expected between UA goals and GA4 conversions, but overall, we would not recommend proceeding with applying GA4 conversions to smart bidding if there are major discrepancies in conversion volumes and conversion values. Secondly, as conversions in GA4 are event-based, we'd recommend ensuring that the corresponding events for conversion actions are being triggered correctly. And this is something we can verify in the reports engagement event section in GA4, which will essentially help us understand if our desired events are triggering as intended. Now, once this is done, we'd also recommend ensuring that the match types and inclusion and exclusion criteria for the old UA conversion actions and new GA4 goals are the same, as both conversion actions should essentially be tracking the same uh, user action, the same event, or essentially the same thing on an app or a website overall. And then finally, while some small discrepancies are expected for the number of conversions per session, we would nonetheless recommend checking site-wide tagging and basic GA4 configuration to ensure that there's nothing fundamentally wrong with how GA4 conversion actions have been set up. So these are some of the steps that we'd recommend following as a hygiene check to validate all a new uh, GA4 conversion actions against the older conversion actions set up using Universal Analytics. Now, we briefly mentioned that some minor discrepancies might be expected in conversion volumes and conversion values between the old conversion actions or goals set up in Universal Analytics and the new conversion actions set up in GA4. Let's take a closer look at some of the root causes behind some of these potential differences and discrepancies. So firstly, when it comes to conversion configuration, as we briefly alluded to, in Universal Analytics, you would define a goal to indicate that a particular user action is to be considered as a conversion. Whereas in GA4, you would first set up an event and then mark that particular event as a conversion event. Secondly, it's also important to keep in mind that Universal Analytics counts only one conversion per session per goal, whereas GA4 counts each and every instance of a conversion event being fired, even if that is within the exact same session 
So essentially, within the same session, it's possible to see multiple conversions for GA4 conversion events, but we would expect to see only one conversion per goal in Universal Analytics. Now, in addition to this, it's important to keep in mind that conversion modeling is available in GA4, but is not supported in Universal Analytics. So essentially, this means that GA4 will be able to backfill and track conversions even when cookies are not observable. And if you have a lot of investment in YouTube campaigns, it's important to keep in mind that GA4 is able to report engaged view conversions from YouTube campaigns, whereas Universal Analytics is not able to report engaged view conversions stemming from YouTube campaigns. And then finally, keep in mind that Universal Analytics uses last non-direct attribution as the default attribution model across all its reports, whereas GA4 uses data-driven attribution by default across all reports. So essentially, the default attribution model between UA and GA4 is different. And this is one of the reasons why we may expect to see some level of differences and discrepancies in conversion volumes and conversion values. So again, as a rough benchmark, a 20% would be an acceptable threshold or an acceptable range for discrepancies between conversion uh, values and conversion volumes. But if there are discrepancies larger than this, we would recommend getting the setup of your J4 conversion events checked. Now, once these conversion events have been set up and once they've been validated and imported into Google Ads, the next step, of course, is to start bidding on J4 conversion events in Google Ads. So there are a couple of best practices to follow at this stage as well. The first best practice is to ensure the data-driven attribution, or DDA, is set up as the default attribution model for any GA4 conversion events that are imported into Google Ads. The second important best practice is to ensure that older Universal Analytics conversion actions are removed from bidding as soon as new GA4 conversion actions have been added to bidding. So essentially, we would want to avoid bidding on duplicate conversion actions. So we would not want to bid on the exact same conversion action set up in UA and GA4 at the exact same time. Uh, this will interfere with the smart bidding algorithms optimization. So as soon as you've added a GA4 conversion action to smart bidding, make sure that the older UA conversion action is removed from smart bidding. And as a best practice, we would recommend adding GA4 conversion actions as secondary in Google Ads for between two to four weeks in order for the system to have enough time to accrue and accumulate conversion data prior to these conversion actions being included in smart bidding. Now, in addition to the best practices for smart bidding, there are also best practices we would recommend following as you complete the audience migration and as you replace the older audiences set up in Universal Analytics with the newer audiences set up in GA4. Now, unlike for conversion actions, it is absolutely fine to apply GA4 audiences along with and at the same time as Universal Analytics audiences, as the Google Ads system will be able to deduplicate users who are both in the new GA4 audiences as well as in the old UA audiences. So the takeaway here is that there is no need for you to go and manually remove the older audiences set up using UA. And then as an additional best practice, it's often a good idea to combine GA4 audiences with customer match lists, as this essentially gives the Google ad system additional first party data signals to work with and optimize towards. So these are some of the best practices we'd recommend following as you complete the conversion and audience steps of the larger GA4 migration. Let's now take a closer look at some of the net new value ads that you can take advantage of once you have finished fully migrating from UA to GA4. Now, one of the most significant net new value ads that GA4 is able to offer is the ability to track and report engaged view conversions from YouTube ads. So, as some of you might be aware, an engaged view conversion, or EVC for short, occurs whenever a user watches a YouTube ad for at least 10 seconds, and then, without clicking on that ad, arrives on a website and performs a conversion action within a three-day window by default. Now, EVCs typically tend to make up a significant chunk of conversions stemming from YouTube ads. And previously, in Universal Analytics, we had no way of tracking or reporting on EVCs from YouTube ads. The good news is that this is now supported in GA4. So as you can see, you can apply a specific segment to analyze the number of EVCs stemming from your YouTube campaigns. 
And this ultimately makes a GA4 a game changer and a much more viable measurement solution for any advertiser who wants to use analytics as a source of truth, but who is also a heavy investor in YouTube campaigns. Now, in addition to EVC reporting, GA4 also offers enhancements to attribution reports in order to help you fully showcase and understand the value of your digital marketing campaigns. Now, attribution reports are, of course, not net new to GA4 per se. They were available and supported in Universal Analytics, but there are a few enhancements to attribution reports that make them even richer and a more holistic source of truth in GA4. So firstly, attribution in reports in GA4 track touch points in both app and web environments, which allows for more comprehensive attribution measurement and reporting. Secondly, conversion modeling capabilities also feed into attribution reports in GA4, which means that we can accurately assign credit to touch points even when cookies are not observable. And then finally, additional net new features like EVC reporting also feed into the attribution reports that GA4 is able to offer. And then the cherry on top is the fact that we're actually able to specify and select attribution models at the overall property level in GA4 and not just specifically within the attribution reports, as was the case in Universal Analytics. So all in all, the additions to attribution reports really go a long way towards helping you make use of GA4 to showcase the full value of your digital marketing campaigns. Now, in addition to these net new reporting features, GA4 also offers net new features when it comes to ads activation and specifically ads targeting. The most exciting of these is the launch of predictive audiences in GA4. As the name suggests, predictive audiences allow you to target users who, for example, are likely to make a purchase within the next seven days are likely to churn within the next seven days or are likely to spend the most within the next 28 days. So predictive audiences really represent the evolution of machine learning capabilities in GA4. And the main value proposition is that they really save you as advertisers a lot of time and investment when it comes to building business intelligence and data science capabilities. So ordinarily, in order to build these audiences, you would have to have a significant data science investment, perhaps a dedicated data science team. But this is essentially now done for you in minutes in GA4, thanks to the advances in machine learning that GA4 is able to offer. So to take a look at some of the specific predictive audiences that GA4 offers, firstly, we have the ability to target users who are likely to make purchases within the next seven days including users who are likely to be first-time purchasers within the next seven days. So this, of course, lends itself quite well towards objectives like driving leads, driving sales, and more specifically, new customer acquisition. In addition to that, we're able to target users who are likely to churn within the next seven days, including purchasers who are likely to churn within the next seven days. And this is particularly useful if your objective is more centered around driving customer attention customer loyalty, or increasing the lifetime value of your existing customers. And then finally, we're also able to target users who are likely to spend the most over the next 28 days, which of course lends itself quite well towards objectives like driving sales, driving leads, increasing lifetime value, and perhaps profit maximization as well. So these are the default predictive audiences that GA4 is able to offer. The really exciting news is that we can actually layer custom events and custom conditions on top of some of these default predictive audiences. So for example, if you're a lead gen customer, it's possible to layer on custom conditions to, for instance, target likely seven day purchasers who are also marketing or sales qualified leads. So all in all, predictive audiences really go a long way towards saving you time and investment when it comes to targeting users who are likely to meet certain conditions within the next um, seven days or the next 28 days or whatever time period might be relevant to your marketing objectives. Now, the final thing we'll touch upon in terms of net new value adds is the ability to combine some of these predictive audiences with predictive conversion events that feed into smart bidding. So essentially, GA4 gives us the ability to set up predictive conversion events, such as purchase likelihood, churn likelihood, and the likelihood to be a top spender. 
And we're not only able to measure these predictive conversion events, but more importantly, we can actually feed them in to smart bidding directly. So essentially, in addition to, let's say, targeting users who are likely to make purchases within the next seven days, the smart bidding algorithm will be able to target its bids and its optimization towards users who are likely to make purchases within the next seven days as well. So we really have the ability to combine or layer on the new predictive audiences with new predictive bidding capabilities in GA4 as well. So with that, we have come to the end of the fourth and final module on this Ads Academy series on privacy-focused measurement. To recap, we have covered some of the best practices when it comes to replacing the old conversion actions and audiences that were set up in Universal Analytics with new conversion actions and audiences set up in GA4. And just as importantly, how we can tap into the net new value adds that GA4 offers to meet our marketing objectives. We hope you found this session useful and we look forward to seeing you at another one of our Ads Academy series. Thank you and all the very best.